In this video, we'll start to focus on the next part, which is what we call the spoilage, stolen or damaged good, goods tab. So imagine you have uh, damaged goods, you get products in, and you realize that, for example, something happened that the fruit is damaged or the products are not up to standard that you don't want to give them to your customers. A very normal situation and many businesses already have like an average percentage calculating for spoilage, stolen goods, uh, damaged goods, you know, anything can happen. Imagine there's a situation in the weather and the weather damaged some of the products you store outside in the rain. So all of this can happen and of course you need to record that. Recording that is very important. However, of course, with that, you have some what we call uh, damage and the value. You will see that the cost must increase. So imagine like that. If you have 10 apples that are bad or rotten, it does not mean that your cost is decreasing by 10 items. No. In this case, the cost in has increased on average because now lesser apples are being sold to compensate for the price. Same with stolen goods. What happened is that if you have three t-shirts, you're selling them for $10 and they cost you $5. And if one is missing, you have two t-shirts, but the cost in total is $15. So, that doesn't, so those kind of things are very important to consider. So we're going to do that as well. You can see Excel, um, like these kind of tools, uh, they need to be planned out properly because you can go very deep and if you don't have something that is on a deeper level You will notice that there will be trouble. All right enough about all the Theoretical stuff. Let's focus on practical. Let's start to uh, uh, Implement this so what we want to do is we want to make a new tab and this tab is called Nope, I'm opening too many tabs at the same time So I'm going to move this here and I'll only focus on one tab. We'll call this the spoilage tab and this can be anything, it can be stolen goods, missing goods, uh, damaged goods. Basically, you, uh, everything under this is considered. All of the three categories. Of course, you can record them separately to track what's going on in your business. If you know that there's so much spoilage, you should even uh, question as well what's going on. Or so much stolen goods, you have to question as well what's going on. So now we have this. And the spoilage just works with the same structure. Just the only thing, what's what's the real difference is that it doesn't have any selling date. It, it has maybe like a spoilage ID, the product ID quantity, and not, no selling price, but we all have the average per unit. So what we will do here is, I'll say here, spoilage ID, and then product ID, and then we have product name, and when we have more, let's go to the sales tab, you see the quantity. And then we say cost. Cost or I guess the amount, well the uh, price per unit. Well probably we don't even have to get this because this is almost a duplicate. Well we can use this price per unit. Let's do that as well. It's probably better. Now I'll explain to you why. So imagine if the price is starting to change up a bit. You have to record this. Because if not you get the average. So let me. I'll explain later on. Even more deeper. So and now the amount. Alright. Here. Very simple. We're going to make a very simple layout design. Exactly identical to what we have so far. The accent. And then here below. We will have this part. Will be all of the inputs and this will be the amount this is the output the formula all right so spoilage ID you can use this if you want to avoid that you can do SID 1 for example SID 2 so let's imagine we're losing apples yes we discovered that there's a spoilage we had a stock we didn't notice it was in the back we know that there were 10 apples in there and they are now rotten so the quality means we cannot sell them anymore they're below quality 
so we can't do anything about this. So here we can get in with a VLOOKUP, we just get the value, and we're going here to the stock. Oh, I see here why we have this double. Wait, am I correct? All right, so let's go back. So one more time, we look up. Now we have the stock. All right, so I'll just open here the formula builder, and with the formula builder, we're going to search for uh, the lookup value is one. We want to know this is apple, so we want to know the thing. So we go here to table array. We need the stock, and we will get just this row here, beautiful. And then the column number is number two. We want to know the word, and this is a fixed or a exact match lookup so we're done click on done close apples fine this works so i will make this also nice output gray there you are so the quantity we need to record the quantity is 10 we notice that 10 apples are sub subpar standard because of the rotten quality and next is the price per unit so how much is the price per unit in this case we're going to look at our stock since we don't know exactly our price per unit, we need to record the price per unit on that day. So if we see this, oh, all right, the average cost is 0 0.54 because you are not able to check which price it is. So we will take the average cost here and we need to insert that. And this cannot be automatic because if you take the automatic average cost, uh, in the long run it will, it will change. So it is not possible. The cost is recorded on that moment. So then we have here now the amount. This multiplied by this. And then we get the pricing, and that's the pricing. So I'm going to put in here a dollar sign that looks a bit more nicer. So we've got now our apples recorded, and these apples are sub standard, so we need to deduct this. So our stock, yes, basically what's going on here now, our stock is going down, but the cost increases. So, or or at least let's say like that our stock is declining but the the amount or the price of these things is is maintaining so we're just losing products without selling them so what we're going to do is we're going to add up the items here so how to do that so first of all we have here our formula and our formula is starting to get very large and then we have here the first thing all right we first need to calculate how many apples are spoiled? So we do again a sum if, and this sum if statement has a range. Yes, we have a criteria and a range. So let's get the uh, range first. So the range should be in spoilage, and the range is this here. So we have the product ID and the quantity. So I'll just select these. And once we have this, we're done. Then the next part, comma, will be the criteria. So what is the criteria? In this case, the criteria is, we have to go to our stock, yes, is this. That's the criteria. Yeah, so we want to make sure that everything with product ID number one matches. And in the sum range, finally, in the spoilage, we'll have to add, oh, sorry, the quantity. We have to add the quantity list. Enter. Oh, all right. So it's going on. Um, yes. So you can see what's going on. I press enter without using a closing tag, and it suggests uh, we will, uh, Excel will automatically suggest it's better to make the same one, but then look here the difference compared to this. So would you like to uh, accept the correction? Yes, that is correct. So now you can see our quantity is minus twenty instead of minus ten. Let's go back here. You can see here our amount. Let's go back. Our amount is also here. So what's going on here? So it's declining here, and I think we need to remove an item here in the sales tab. We had this one. I'm going to remove that. This is not making any sense. Let's make this 25. So it keeps a bit more consistent. So let's go back here. You can see now it has this. However, if you remove this, yes, you see that the amount here is also declining. Yes, you can see that. It says, oh, we sold 10 more apples. No, that's not the case. We're not selling 10 more apples. So what we have to do here 
is we have the average cost and now we need to add an additional to that and that's for the spoilage so how we do that simple structure as well with the sum if statement sum if is very very powerful so what we do now is we say here so let's see like this. so you can see here the amount but then we say all right the amount we will have to oh, on this amount we need to add up plus the sum if and this sum if has a range as well and the criteria so exactly the same structure so okay the sum if is this and we have here the amount all right comma what is the criteria the criteria should be number one so we go back here to our stock it says this is the criteria right apples and there is a comma and then some range. So what's the range we're going to calculate? This should be the range. Close this and enter. So now you see this is the thing. So let's check if we really see it. You can see here now it went down. And now if we add the spoilage, we add it up here. And this is how it works. So now we're going to get, you notice it's starting to get very deep in here now. But this is the way how you can do this. And of course we can add up every one of them but if you want to add up all of them make sure you freeze the cells that are related so f4 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 enter so now you can drag this you can see nothing happens because there's no spoilage for other topics yet so here same sort f4 f4 and here f4 f4 enter let's drag this no changes yet same here this is anything here no you can see everything here we didn't adjust this so this is all fine so what happened now if we find the oranges and we discovered that no one is buying oranges so what we have to do here is spoilage id number two and we discovered that this is oranges let's you can see here the vlookup let's do this as well f4 f4 to hard code them yes and then just drag this down so there's nothing here, of course, because there's no spoilage yet. And we say here, 1,000 oranges. Yes. What is the unit price? So let's go back here. And we can search here for the unit price. And uh, let's see here. So let's check something. This is really important. Let's delete this. Let's see what if the stock is changing. You can see average cost is not adjusting. Even if this would be adjusted, you can see here the down thousand items changes, but the price of average cost does not change. So here we say average cost is 0 0.44, so four cents. So what's the amount we have here? The formula. So four hundred dollars in loss. That's a huge amount. All right. So let's check here back to our stock. Now you see we are losing this, and our amount is still maintained here. So very very useful and this is how you go more and more deeper in what you're doing and checking your stock very essential for you to make sure that this is correct so if you like a stock control you like to do bookkeeping because this part will be also very related to bookkeeping and you like uh, how to create invoices and everything on Excel to manage your business because basically you should have bookkeeping, invoicing, purchase orders, uh, sales, and the bookkeeping related and accounting all in one. Because this all is related to each other. And as I'm trying to make this step-by-step -step very clear, and this is Excel, you can go so deep. It's really exciting. So if you like all these kind of topics, check out my link. And in my link, you can find many different topics related to all of these items here to help you create a very solid system for your business so click on the link below and discover it yourself you, these are all huge excel courses